Regular expressions, or regex, is one of those things where if you find that it works, then you really don't read into it too much. However, it's extremely useful with validating certain kind of texts or formats, and I've also found myself using it within some of my tests. And typically, with something like this, and typically, with a regex like this, it's not too complicated, and you would be able to work through to see what it's doing, and then have some kind of understanding of the different matches or different cases it would match the text. And then there are some cases where the regex is really complicated looking, and it's really hard to tell what's actually going on. But given some examples and different use cases of that pattern, you're able to then see what it's doing. And in this case, it's trying to do a email validation. So in this episode, we're going to look at regex in Ruby and some of the different ways that we can use it and interact with it, as well as some helpful tips and tricks that might help you write some regex within your application. So we're going to start off, and let's say if we want to create our own valid email regex. So we'll first start off the regex with a forward slash. We then want to match the start of the string. And then we want to find at least one word or character, including a plus hyphen or dot. We can then have a literal at symbol. And then we can search for any kind of character from A to Z. And we want to include any kind of number. And we can also say a literal dash and then dot. And then we also want to have a literal dot. And then anything from A to Z with the ending being a letter, to the end, and then we want to do a insensitive match. And so once we have our regex, we can take a string, let's say it's john.do at example.com, and we want to see if this is a valid email address based on the regex pattern that we created above. And so with a string, you can do a dot match, and then you can pass in the regex. And let's go ahead and put this out into our console. So we'll save the file, and then we'll execute this, and then we see that we got a true return. If we duplicate this line, and if we make it to where it resembles that email address, but it's not quite accurate, and if we rerun this, you can see that the first line returns true, and the second line is returning false. So there's another way we can validate our regex. So we'll take the example of our string again, and this time we'll do a equals tilde, and then we'll pass in our valid regex. And let's go ahead and take our failing example to see how that would match as well. So if we run this, you can see that we get a true false, and then we get a zero, and then we get nothing for the last one. So I'm going to just wrap this, and we'll check to see if this is nil. And so we get true back. So a invalid match, or a string that fails to match the regex pattern, is going to return nil. And from there, you can do your check. And then, we can also do this in a bit of a reverse fashion, where we can do a regex and do our test, and then we can do a match, and then we can put in some kind of string. So I'll put in some numbers, and then I'll do one with letters. And when we run this, you can see that the match, the first one, I bet it is returning nil. So we'll run that again. So it's returning nil. And the second match, it's just matching the first letter of the string, and it's returning that part of the string. So luckily, when we're dealing with regex, there's a lot of patterns out there. Like for regexer, they have a list of community patterns that you can see to clear HTML tags, email validation, IP address checking, date validation, password validation, and many others. However, a lot of people don't know that there's actually within the Ruby Standard Library one as well. So there is a URI, mail to, and then a email, regex. So we can put the output of this, and you can see it is a really long regex full of different things. So let's go ahead and put this through our test. So I'll comment out these other ones, and I'll just paste down our two examples, and I'll replace it with the Ruby Center library pattern. And so you see that we still get our same example with the true and false. And then we can also do a different test, where if it's a Gmail account, you can add a plus and then some fake string. And if we run and test this, you can see that we get our true back as well. And sometimes you may want to use the regex patterns to do some kind of check or case. So we can do a case on our string. We can do when, and you could do something like a string dot upcase to get the uppercase of the string, but you can also do this with regex. So we're just going to check to see if this is lowercase. And if it is lowercase, then we'll print out lowercase. And we can do something similar for if it's uppercase, or we can just put mixed case. And so if we run this, 
we get mix case returned because it's looking for literal characters from A to Z. So if we get rid of our hello world, the space in between, and if we run this again, we now see it's an upper case. And if we change this to a down case, we now get it is a lower case. So in this example, you wouldn't really need to use regex for this because the Ruby methods are sufficient. However, if you have more complicated things, let's say if you want to check to see if something is in the format of a phone number, a social security number, or something else, then you would be able to use the regex here to perform those more difficult operations without having to create other methods to do all of the complex logic to determine if things are in the correct format. And let's say if we have a string like this, where its words are separated with a mix of dashes and underscores. And let's say if you want to get an array of all the different words in the sentence, so we need to have a split. So we can define what our delimiters are. And in this case, we have two delimiters. We have a dash, and then we also have an underscore. We can then do a puts, and we'll take our string, we'll split it, and this is where we can use a regex and a union. So a union is going to take an array and it's going to combine them to do a search or a match on each item in the array. And then we can pass in our delimiters. So if we run this, you can see that we are printing out each one of these as a text. And if we interpolate this, then you can see the actual array where it has successfully split out the dashes and the underscores. So each word is its own item in the array. And let's say if we have an array of different words. So we have happier, unicorn, newer, mermaid, and pony. And if we want to find all of the words in this array that end with ER, we can take our words, we can do a grep, and then we can pass in a regular expression where we just want to check at the end if it is ending with ER. And we can put this, and then we get happier and newer returned. And sometimes you may have a bad word, and so with the bad word is frick, you can do a sub, We'll look for the frick literal, and then we're going to replace it with asterisks. And so if we run that, you can see that the word is asterisked out. So regex and a lot of different patterns isn't something that I memorize, but I do have a cheat sheet that I have handy that I use to and I refer to often. So I'll post a link to this in the show notes, but it basically covers many of the different use cases and the things that you're able to do with regex. So it's a pretty good explanation of all the different functions and different things that you're able to do with regex. And I also posts a link to regexer and their community patterns. And I think that a lot of them are really good. However, sometimes they're not perfect. So you will want to make sure that you're doing your due diligence, that these patterns are matching the different text samples that you have, just so you're not accidentally introducing a bug into your application. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.